The Scon Explorer. This is something that came out of a lot of customers asking, you know, how do I do things like I'm upgrading from my 2012 SCOM to 2022. Uh, I need to know what is actually running in 2012 to know whether there's something applicable that needs to run in 2022. You'll find lots of overrides. You have no idea what they're used for. It's just one of those longstanding general questions. And what came out of this is a very general tool that lets you explore SCOM. So, it lets you quickly find any element in a management group. So you can search in the name, display name, description, even the comment fields of each element. And you can also search by ID. And that's something that is very difficult. Um, it's basically impossible in the SCOM console. I know Kevin Holman's put a couple articles together on how to do queries against the database, but you actually have to have access to the database to do that. Um, but now we've made it a lot easier. It's built into MP Studio. Uh, for each element that we find, we can show the properties, the XML behind it, and we can navigate to all the other uh, related elements. So, for instance, a unit monitor has a unit monitor type. So when you found the monitor, you can make one click and go down and visit the type, the unit monitor type, which, of course, is going to have probe actions and alert messages and things like that. And you can navigate through those really easily. Uh, some of the elements actually have hierarchy. So, for instance, everybody knows there's a class hierarchy. You know, this class has a base class, which is derived from another base class, etc. But there's other things like uh, management packs have referenced MPs and MPs that reference them. Uh, relationships um, monitors have the roll up, so they have a presentation. Uh, sorry, a parent. Uh, so we've put a lot of uh, thought into that as well. Um, and we'll be demonstrating that. And one of the nicest things is you can actually find class, is, class instances by ID. So if you have an event log entry and all it has is an ID for something, you can look that up very easily. Uh, you can also see group members, um, et cetera. So that's um, Scrum Explorer in general. You can also explore not just the whole management group, but you can explore a single MP and all of its referenced MPs. It uses fewer resources, less memory, so it's and it's a little faster to load, although that's not going to be a significant issue. But there's some downsides to it. It may not show everything. So for instance, some base class images that are found in other MPs that aren't directly referenced won't show up and things like that. But it's very useful if you want to examine an MP which has not yet been deployed to the management group. But generally, the whole management group uh, explorer is better if you can use it that way. I did want to talk about uh, sort of live versus uh, dead data is the wrong term, but that's <laughs> that's the opposite. So when we search for class instances, group membership, relationships, that sort of stuff, that's live data. And we fetch that from the management group as needed. Uh, there's no need to refresh anything. So if we display a group um, and its membership uh, and a new member is added, the next time you display it, that new member would show up in the group uh, immediately. Um, the management packs and elements those are brought in once when SCOM Explorer is is fetched, and we don't automatically refresh them. So if an MP is added or deleted, or even a new version of an MP is imported, you won't see those changes. Now, you can manually refresh, and it doesn't take very long, but we thought for consistency, it's probably best to leave um, a, a consistent view and not just change it on you all the time. So... That is where we get to our demo here. So let me bring up MP Studio. Um, and what I wanted to show is how easy it is to bring this up. So right click on a registered management group, say Explorer Management Group. Here it's loading in all the rules, monitors, classes, and everything and tying them all together. And so what we have now is a list of everything that's on that management group. So all the management packs. Uh, as you can see from the, th the thickness of the scroll thumb here, there's a lot of stuff. This is literally everything that's been installed in the management group from a management pack. Now, you're going to want to filter that down. So let me just filter to uh, Microsoft 365. Um, we're going to only look at, for instance, the classes in that. So there we go. We've already filtered down to what we want. Uh, I'm going to select... Um, one of these classes here. So this is a class. 
we can show the properties. This is the same window you've seen in MP Studio. Um, I actually was going to show this differently. I was going to show a monitor here so that we could look at the unit monitor and look at um, this and show that the product knowledge shows up here, et cetera. You can show the XML, which would have shown up in the product in the properties window. And as I mentioned, there's hierarchies here. So this unit monitor rolls up to the um, mail flow aggregate availability, rolls up to availability, and rolls up to entity health. Um, with all, most of the hierarchies, if you hold down, for instance, the control or shift key, when you click this, we give some additional information. So this monitor, we show the target, the alert message, and the unit monitor type. These are all clickable links. So for instance, if I click on the unit monitor type here, we drill down. We're now looking at the unit monitor here. Um, the other things we get here is bubbles here or buttons here that are specific. So for the unit monitor type, we have three condition detections, one data source, one probe action, and it's referenced by that monitor. That was where we just came from. So you can drill back, you can drill back up, or you can just use the back button here. Um, for things where we only have one, you know, one data source, one probe action, we can give the name. Where we have multiple things, we would display account. You can drill down and you see them. So there's three different expression filters in there. If we look at the XML, you're actually going to see you know, there's our data source, there's our probe action, there's our healthy filters, the first expression, critical filter, and there's a critical suppressed filter here. That information is all there. Um, when we look at things like, let's go back to classes, and we look at, uh, say, watch, oops, watch your node application, we have a show instance or show instances button here. So this will actually show the various instance, uh, and we can drill down here a bit more, and we can get details. So this gives the class name um, its value. We have some common properties here. We have its health state and whether it's in ma maintenance modes, more common properties. Um, the next stuff here in blue is relationships. You know, like watch your node host networking. That link would take you to the networking class. Um, you know. So all that's there. And then here's the properties of the Watcher node. And then below that, we get the classes that it's derived from. So Watcher node is derived from local application, which doesn't have any interesting properties. But we eventually go down to config item, which has an object status. And config items derived from system.entity or object. So there's our display name. And it's hosted on Windows computer. And again, everything here is clickable. Um, we can also show the relationship. Uh, we can show instances of the relationship. Um, so here is uh, the watcher node, and it hosts the mail flow. We can drill down there if we want to. Um, and I did want to come back to classes for a second here um, because we have groups here. So for instance, all component instances, we can look at the group members. Uh, I've got a very minimal M365 uh, test environment here right now. Uh, but resource pool computers will show my three computers and that sort of information. So that's a quick rundown. Um, again, here's the, uh, data, the SCALM environment to fetch the data from. So for instance, if I have, and let me just go back to MP Studio for a second. Oh, sorry, I was in MP Studio. Uh, I wanted to go to... Um, this overrides thing here. So I have uh, overrides for 365. And if we look at um, this discovery override here, um, what we'll see is there's a context instance. And this is something you're gonna run across fairly frequently, especially when you're moving. You don't know offhand what that refers to. But I can copy that GUID, go back to Explorer and search for that. And it'll tell me what it is. This is a Win32 operating system on this VMIC 2016 computer, uh, and of course, all the properties for it. So now you can see whether that's an override which was uh, applicable from an earlier environment that you may want to use in a later environment. You could also change the management group that you're searching from. Uh, this won't be found. Uh, that's what I expected, uh, because that machine is not multi-home between my two management groups here. 
And uh, I think the final thing to check here is this is the refresh button, which would refresh that health model. It goes back out to where it got the information the first time and reloads it. So if a new management pack had been added or removed or updated, you can do the refresh there. As I mentioned, you can search for uh, almost anything. Uh, so if we come back here, we've got um, alerts here. Uh, alert rule is the Microsoft 365 incident alerting rule. So I'm just copying from my crib sheet so I don't have to type. We'll come back here and we'll just paste that in. Uh, actually, I'll select everything first. It does make life easier. Uh, so this is the incident. Or, uh, incident alerting rule. So here's the rule that we were actually looking for. Here's three overrides that actually refer to that, but they have that same text in the display name. Uh, you can search for names, you can search in the descriptions, you can search by ID. So here's an ID that I just uh, grabbed for the demonstration here. Uh, but let's say you have an event log entry which mentions some workflow, but you don't know what it is. Paste that in here and it turns out it's a unit monitor. The specific case that, where this is really useful is if we have an event log like this, um, we have this object name, select test two, but we don't know what the type of that is, but we have the object ID here. I can copy that, go back here, paste it in here, and it turns out that it's an M365 subscription, and there's that name. We did know the name, but now we at least know what the type is. We know its health state. We know all the relations that the subscription hosts a service, and here's the individual services like uh, Intune, et cetera, and all the various properties are there below it. But we think this is going to make life very easy for you.